Hey, Lynn, how, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Um, you know, first, you know, thanks so much uh, for your time. Uh, I know with uh, Glasgow Film Festival, you're probably getting dragged in a, a million different directions all at the one time. Don't worry about it, I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, congrats um, on the, the film. I uh, watched it last night, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's so, um, so tense, um, kind of from the get-go. I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, just want to start by asking, you know, um, what was the experience like making it? This, of course, is your you know feature debut. Uh, and was it you was it what you were expecting? Well, you know, I I've made I made nine short films and I worked on BBC's The Break and I worked as a camera assistant for years. So with all of that experience, um, going into my production where we had COVID, we had a limited budget. Uh, we were outside for so much of it in the freezing cold. Um, because of all that experience, I really felt prepared and used to it and honestly just thrilled. You know, I probably, you know, you couldn't see it every day because I had a mask on, but I was just beaming, smiling every day because I was making my first feature film. <laughs> yeah, uh, like you said, the, the conditions did look, uh, you know, pretty unforgiving. Um, you know, was it a pretty tough slog, you know, doing that? It was, yeah, but you know, you know, I, I working with anybody, I always come from a place of respect and you know mutual respect. So we kind of developed a brilliant little team, and you know we were all in it together, and everybody, you know, just wanted to make the best film possible. So that always helps. That helps when you're in the trenches, <laughs> uh, especially knee deep in mud. <laughs> literal um, trenches, yeah. Yeah, literal. <laughs> And falling into holes and like having to grab on to your cinematographer so that you don't yeah that that's that's what we were dealing with <laughs> well all cinematographers have got that you know um multi-purpose you know what i mean so yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> what sort of lessons um you know did you take from that experience um that you're gonna take with you you know on other projects i think you know there are certain lessons that I kind of started off thinking, oh, should we do it this way or should we consolidate that scene? And then maybe because of lack of experience, I thought, no, it'll be OK. But then you're actually in it <laughs> and you're up against it and you're, you're doing something particularly difficult and you need to turn around on it. Um, so I think I will develop how I will shoot and try and make it as simple as possible while also maintaining our artistic integrity, which is something I think that we really manage to do, you know, when you're working in low budgets, um, well, when you're working with high budgets, a lot of the time it can be a, an act of compromise. But, um, you know, I think we did really well. And that was because um, my cinematographer and I, Connor, we worked very closely together in pre-production and you know before we even had a storyboard artist involved we were drawing little stick men of of what we were going to do and where everybody was going to be and the dynamics of a scene and you know that just helped us so much going into it you know and I was fortunate because I had met Connor years ago and um we worked in camera together so we kind of already had a little bit of a rapport. That opening scene uh is pretty you know eerie uh, and disturbing um how did I, uh I so much <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, you know Matt Harvey you know pitch you know the idea to you and what were your initial thoughts on uh, on his screenplay? Well, do you know um, the the well how it all came about was I was living in England and I came home and I contacted the development executive at Northern Ireland Screen and asked her did she have anything that she thought I would be interested in, and she said yes I have Mandrick. so she put me in touch with Matt. So honestly, you Matt we didn't have the opportunity to pitch um you know it had been told to me what it was it was just you know it was witch it was a bit folky and you know because ursula the development sex knows my sensibility she thought it would be great so i read the script blind and then i met up with matt and when we were chatting something really rare and fantastic happened in that we both wanted to make the same film and you know, that just, we, we bonded instantly over that. And, you know, I got all of his themes, I got his references and he liked what I was bringing to it. So it was really kismic what happened, you know, and how it all came together. And after that, I phoned a friend of mine who's a producer that I always wanted to work with and we never had the opportunity. 
And then I left him alone with the idea for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and the next thing he optioned the script. So then we were moving. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everything kind of came together uh, all at the, the right time. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I always have to say, you know, when I tell that story behind that, you know, there's about 10, 15 years of networking and, you know, doing everything that Northern Ireland Screen had on offer to help you cultivate your craft and go through script development and make short films. So, you know, I think that's something I would always say is an asset, you know, it's building those relationships and it can take a while, but it's worth it. You definitely get a feeling uh, in this, um, you know, of, you know, kind of Blair Witch, you know, even Midsummer. Um, I love Midsummer. It's one of my favorite horror films from the last 10 years. Yeah, it was, how influential, you know, was that uh, on you when you were, you know, making some of your decisions? Oh, it was unbelievably influential. I, I kept looking at Midsummer, um, Hereditary, The Witch, even season one of True Detective. The, you know, there was bits in there. When I look at my vision document, there's a lot of, you know, at the end of True Detective when Rust is, you know, going through the, the maze type such system and there's, you know, just symbolism everywhere. Um, you know, they were they were with me every day. You know, and some of the, my favorite films, they're with me no matter what. You know, I was raised on Alien and Aliens and Terminator and Terminator 2, and The Thing and Jaws, and I just bring that to everything that I do. Um, but I made everybody watch the, the Witch and Hereditary before we began. A few people that aren't used to horror were a little bit upset by them, <laughs> which is quite funny. But um, it certainly helped to inform. And I think that it really helped people really helped the crew get on board with what I was trying to do and um, you know the tone was with us on the set we were having a great time don't get me wrong but <laughs> it was there with us and you know I think people were really rooting for the film which is what you want. Did you make anyone watch uh, Midsummer? No I didn't actually because <laughs> more people had seen it um, but Hereditary in particular, um, the kind of unhinged nature of certain scenes, I, I wanted those elements in there. So those were, I had to prioritize, <laughs> especially with, you know, my actresses that weren't um, keen on horror. <laughs> the whole uh, the whole folklore of you know, Mandrake, you know, goes back to also like the Bible and you know, even referencing, you know, Romeo and Juliet. How much were you kind of already aware of that, um, you know, before you signed on to the, the project? I knew that the, I knew a little bit of the lore and I was always fascinated by how they were formed in the gallows. I always thought that was a disgustingly beautiful fact. Um, but you know, and then we kind of played with it, but it's funny how many people mention Harry Potter above all else. <laughs> but Harry Potter, of course, left out a lot of information. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I was, I was interested in, you know, being raised in Ireland, you know, you, you're constantly being told about ghouls and goblins and uh you know anything like that always always have piques and interest in me you could always pitch uh, i suppose a harry potter spin-off like in a horror mandrake uh, type thing that could be interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be brilliant <laughs> yeah, definitely um you know derva uh Crotty, you know plays you know bloody mary uh she's brilliant uh in this um what was the casting process like for you guys? Did it take, you know, quite a long time? And you know, when she uh, auditioned, did you guys know, you know, right away that she was going to be perfect for this role? The the casting process was very lengthy because it was very hard to find Kathy and Mary. Um, Kathy was a little bit harder than Mary was, um, but you know, Georgina Simpson, my casting director, she really went above and beyond and found people that, you know, because we were, I was really trying to cast for Northern Ireland and, you know, Ireland and try and keep it as indigenous as possible. But um, we did reach out a little, we reached out across the border, so across community <laughs> negotiations. And uh, when Deirdre and Dervla auditioned, it was just kismic it was just so clear that they they were my characters um you know Dervla has such a, a gravitas such a presence about her you know she is the most warm lovely person in reality but she just captivates you you know she really draws you in and that was something I needed with Mary I needed her to draw you in and uh you know it, even in an unsettling way but you have to be caught by her and you know because even in real life, regardless of you know witchy elements, that is what um, criminals do. That's what 
you know, I, I used to teach in a prison. I used to teach filmmaking in a prison and uh, they really try and they try and draw you in, which was, it was great kind of going into the film with that prior knowledge. <laughs> you get flashbacks uh, of those, uh, those parts of your life. <laughs> well, I don't know, flashbacks that then I reimagined and put my own spin on it. <laughs> I need to say, you know, uh, deva has got, even in scenes where she's not saying anything, she's got this kind of menacing presence, um, you know, which, which I loved. Um, did you, you know, through the filming, give her kind of freedom, you know, through the scenes to kind of try things out and see what worked and what oh absolutely you know and I think that's you know when you find your cast um you want to find the people that are on the same page as you so that you can let them you know play with it and bring out more of the character than and sometimes it can be really surprising and you know sometimes you you're both just working towards this single moment and you know I I love throwing you know words in I love leaving with a word and just seeing what they come up with um but you know it, the beauty of working with my wonderful characters or my wonderful cast was that you know they barely needed that much direction because we were so in tune with each other um but you know Dervla Dervla most of the time was a one take wonder you know like I know that that's a gift when you're in such a tight schedule uh, she would just completely captivate you like one of the first speeches that she gives when they first meet that was done in one take and I was just completely blown away and I was like yep we can move on <laughs> risky of course but yeah we got it <laughs> makes your life a little bit easier um, and just to ask also not to give away you know too much um, but you know the the mandrake you know figure I suppose that we see um, how challenging was it for you guys like for the prop team at least you know, to, to create that and get the, the look, you know, that you wanted? Well, it was interesting because we we had a few different designs of it. Before I even met with my production designer or props, I had sketched out loads of little mandrakes and what I wanted, what I felt was appropriate. And, you know, I didn't want it to have a normal mouth. Um, and, you know, that's a symbol for rebirth um, in pagan culture. So I just thought that was beautiful. But funnily enough, something that really... Um, inspired me was Hellraiser and um, a character called uh, Butterball and I just wanted to kind of bring that I wanted it to be disgusting to look at but also really fascinating to look at um, and then of course in VFX in post we were able to um, tweak it a little bit to add a new element which was great fun. Uh, just one final question uh, before you go you know have you now got the directing bug are you working on anything you know at the moment that you can share and tell us about? Well, I've had the directing bug since, I don't know, I was like six years old, but um, <laughs> I'm attached to a, a remake from the 90s, a horror from the 90s, but I'm not allowed to say anything more about it, um, which is exciting. And I also went through script development on a post-apocalyptic horror um, sci-fi that um, I was optioned by Star Child Pictures, and we're making really great strides to, to move forward with that film. Uh, so I'm very excited and there's lots on the horizon I'm, I'm being sent a lot of scripts right now which is just where you want to be <laughs> good good problem to have uh, yeah. well Lynn uh, thanks so much uh, for your time and you know best of luck with the movie release thank you so much cheerio take it easy bye, bye. ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the Goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you guys